A total solar eclipse is an incredibly moving experience. In the continental US, there's going to be an amazing event on August 21st, 2017, a total eclipse of the sun. Well, a total solar eclipse is this incredible phenomenon that happens because of the sun being 400 times bigger than the moon, but also 400 times farther away. Suppose this tennis ball is the sun and the ping pong ball is the moon, and I'm a person on Earth looking at the two. If the moon is a bit too far away in its elliptical orbit, then it doesn't quite block the sun. And if it's too close, then it blocks not only the bright disk of the sun, but the inner corona as well. But if I line them up so that the ratio of distances is two to one, that's the same as the ratio of sizes. And then they look the same size in the sky. So the ping pong ball moon blocks the entire tennis ball sun. Nowhere else in the solar system is that the case. So if aliens were to visit our solar system, I claim they should visit Earth at the time and location of a total solar eclipse, and they would leave very happy. Well, the Space Sciences Lab, together with Google and a number of institutions, has decided to document the eclipse over the hour and a half that the shadow crosses the continental US. We've got about a thousand serious photographers taking good quality images of the sun, and anyone else who wants to contribute can do so as well. By having many images of the corona over the course of an hour and a half, we'll be able to examine the changing structure of the corona. And that's important because the satellites orbiting Earth right now can't monitor changes in the inner corona for technical reasons, but from the ground we can. Scientists want to understand the structure of the corona better because it tells us about the inner workings of the sun. There are solar flares and coronal mass ejections that then interact with Earth's magnetic field and can cause power blackouts. So the better we understand the sun, the more we will be able to respond to and indeed even predict these tremendous outbursts from the sun's surface. And that's something that citizen scientists will actually be able to help out with. If you don't make an attempt to go to the location where a total solar eclipse is happening, one will visit you roughly every 380 years. So this is a real opportunity for tens of millions of Americans and others throughout the world to see the total solar eclipse.
Well, throughout history, massive volcanic eruptions have had damaging effects to our planet and its people. Well, scientists at NASA are now trying to prevent future events, which they say may just be the only way to save the human race. RT's Trini Chavez explains. Supervolcanic eruptions have had some devastating effects on our planet and all those on it. Therefore, experts at NASA are working on some risky strategies to prevent one from happening, since we may be on the brink of one erupting very soon. Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming is famous for its tranquil geysers and hot springs. But beneath its beautiful surface of the park lies a massive volcanic chamber that could be on the verge of exploding. According to the United States Geological Survey, three extremely large explosive eruptions have occurred at Yellowstone in the past 2.1 million years, with a reoccurrence interval of about 600,000 to 800,000 years. The most recent took place 640,000 years ago, suggesting that Yellowstone is overdue for an eruption. But outlets like geysers and hot springs at the park can bleed out some heat, delaying the inevitable eruption. And when NASA experts analyzed the problem, they thought the most logical solution would be to to cool the volcano down. NASA has a plan to drill a hole into the side of the volcano and pump water through it. When the water comes back out, it'll be heated to over 600 degrees, slowly cooling the volcano. The team hopes that given enough time, this process will take enough heat from the volcano to prevent it from ever erupting. According to the BBC, Brian Wilcox, a former member of the NASA Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, talked about the actual devastation that could come from an eruption and the risky techniques that that the agency is considering for preventing one, including ways that could potentially set one off. The possible plan would drill into the bottom of the Yellowstone volcano using high-pressure water to release heat from the magma chamber. But Wilcox said this could be very risky. He told the BBC this can make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture, and you might trigger the release of harmful volatile gases in the magma at the top of the chamber, which would otherwise not be released. Although NASA is considering other plans, it seems that cooling down the volcano could work even though it's a risky process. And it's not cheap either. The plan would be around an estimated $4.5 billion. Reporting in New York, Trinity Chavez, RT.
the activity is escalating and causing a red flag to be raised by those who monitor these activities. One of the most important activities now being monitored by seismologists as well as NASA scientists has to do with the recent developments at the Yellowstone supervolcano caldera. Just a few days ago, a Newsweek article published an alarming report that observers had recorded more than 1,500 earthquakes on the western edge of Yellowstone National Park as part of an ongoing swarm uh, currently in its seventh week. The swarm began on June 12th, and as of August the 2nd, a whopping 1,562 events have been registered by the University of Utah's seismograph station. So this has been ongoing for seven weeks. Even though a spokesperson for the U.S. Geological Survey tried to downplay the significance of this by stating back at the beginning of this ongoing event that the activity seemed to be winding down, which of course turned out to be a very misleading statement. The largest of the quakes during the swarm of activity was a 4.4, which turns out to be the largest in the region since 2014. There were an additional eight events over the span of activity that registered in the three range. The quakes have been occurring a number of kilometers below sea level, but some have been felt above the surface. When seismic activity considered to be above the normal is registered in the Yellowstone region, it usually raises a red flag among seismologists for one very important reason. There is a vast supervolcano that lies beneath Yellowstone, with some experts stating that any future eruption could prove catastrophic for humanity. One of the typical signs of a volcano acting up centers around increased activity, but there are other signs of an imminent eruption, which include the amount of surface deformation, as well as changes to the hyperthermal system and the amount of gas output. Here is what American physicist Makio Kaku says about the potential of a supervolcano eruption. We're talking about a sleeping Godzilla underneath Yellowstone that if it erupts in a maximum eruption called Category 8, it could literally tear the guts out of the United States of America. Instead of having 50 states of the Union, we would only have 30 states of the Union. Now that's Category 8. This report looked at Category 7, which is much more likely once every thousand years rather than once every million years. That means in every century, there's a 10% chance that somewhere on the planet Earth, there could be a supervolcanic Category 7 eruption. That's the danger. You, you just talked about a volcano that could, could wipe out 20 states. How, how in the world is that possible? Well, it's happened before, 2.1 million years ago, 1.3, and also 0.6 million years ago. We have the evidence of a gigantic eruption that is sufficient to tear the guts out of the U.S. of A. So this report has to be taken seriously, but... It, it, it's hard really to imagine this this lake of lava that stretches hundreds of miles in all directions. It, uh, how do we know that? And how, how, how do they read that? Well, just two years ago, there was a scare, in fact. We actually began to measure the size of this lava hotspot, and it turned out to be twice as big as we previously thought. Eventually, the law of averages catches up to you. And this report singled out uh, Mount Vesuvius outside Naples, Italy, outside Mexico City, and Yellowstone as three hotspots where a Category 7 volcanic eruption could indeed take place in this century. So there are only three of this size in all the world? Well, there's several in um, Indonesia and uh, New Zealand that have had Category 8 eruptions, in fact. But then again, we're talking about once every million years for Category 8. Category 7 will be many times the size of Mount St. Helen, enough to cause widespread destruction across the state, but not enough to destroy the U.S. of A. But still, something that we have to take very seriously now.
What would we get in the way of warnings, Michio? Well, unlike a media from outer space, where you get no warning whatsoever, we get warnings. If you've seen movies like Pompeii, you know that there are days, in fact weeks, of eruptions building up, grumbling inside, underneath the ground, near the, the pocket of lava. So there would be enough time, several weeks, in order to begin evacuation if and when such an unlikely event were to take place. And so Yellowstone earthquake activity is currently at elevated levels compared with typical background activity. But Yellowstone is not the only region that has a caldera that poses risks for the safety and welfare of the public. There is a caldera located in the Long Valley region of California that is registering a swarm of quakes that also have the potential to raise a red flag. Between 30 and 35 quakes per day have been registered from uh, this location since the beginning of August. This swarm is still ongoing and seismologists are unable to determine whether the swarm is a sign of an imminent supervolcano eruption. This is just another in a series of disturbing developments that must be taken seriously in this day and time in which we live. Volcanic activity has risen dramatically in 2017. It is not an event that garners a great deal of media attention, but it's ongoing and its effects are potentially the world. The effects will be felt far and wide. And that is why seismologists are so concerned about these earthquake swarms and what they may mean for our future. Scientists are sounding the alarm bell more frequently today than at any time in recent memory. What is happening now has them very concerned. One of the areas now considered to be a potential danger zone is a geologic structure under the seafloor of Alaska that poses a high risk for a major tsunami. The feature closely resembles one that produced the 2011 Tahaku tsunami off Japan, which killed some 20,000 people and created a nuclear catastrophe. This newly discovered subaquatic structure is extremely important not only to people living along the North American coast, but also in Hawaii and parts of the Pacific. This is also significant if we consider what is happening around the world today with seismic swarms, because tsunamis can occur as giant plates of ocean crust dive under adjoining continental crust, a process that we call subduction. Some plates get stuck for decades or centuries and tensions build until they suddenly slip by each other. This produces a big earthquake and the ocean floor may jump up or down like a released spring. The 2011 Japan tsunami caught the island nation off guard when a leading edge of the overriding continental plate became detached from the main mass. So a jump in that plate occurred which produced a wave 130 feet in a number of Japanese locations. Seismic activity can also be a telltale sign of the potential for great danger originating from the sea floor. But dangers of areas like these are just now being widely recognized. The Earth's crust is heating up from far below the surface as evident in the global unrest that is happening now. But the Earth's atmosphere is also heating due to the flow of cosmic energy particles and the penetration of radiation ions. These two particles combined are having a profound effect on our weather and our health. The heat wave of 2017 has garnered much attention recently and is a perfect example of the effects of a warming planet. A prolonged and life-threatening heat wave hit the west coast of the United States, where dozens of cities saw incredible record day temperatures soaring well above 100 degrees, as seen here from the August 3rd map that was released by the NOAA. Here is how unprecedented this particular heat wave was. 
Washington State normally sees mild summers where temperatures peak in the mid-80s, where the coastline endures a year-long drizzle. Seattle has only seen three days of temperatures north of 100 degrees in the last 120 years. Portland experienced temperatures that spiked to 106 degrees. That was nearly 20 degrees hotter than parts of Florida during that time frame. Especially concerning is the news that Seattle has had 52 consecutive days without rain, setting an all-time record dating back to 1951. Here's a look at the past month of satellite images. As you can see, not much is happening over Washington State. The extreme heat anomalies across the United States is a very disturbing development. Death Valley, California experienced the hottest temperatures ever recorded in the United States and across the world for the month of July 2017. As you can see from the chart, the temperatures didn't fall below 89 degrees at any point in the month of July at Death Valley. Cities in the west and in the southeast saw their hottest month on record for July, equaling or besting the previous average temperatures for their regions. The NOAA is informing the public that climate change will only enhance the threat of extreme temperatures on Earth during this century. The hottest years on record have occurred since the year 2000, indicating that summer temperatures will rise by 3 to 10 degrees by 2100, according to projections. However, it is important to understand that the NOAA studies suggest that the higher percentage of the warming that is happening on the planet is the result of man-made negligence, with the remainder contributed to natural causes, which causes are not sufficiently explained in any definitive terms. It is our belief that there are other causes contributing to the dramatic change in climate, and those causes do not originate from Earth. The summer heat wave of 2017 is not confined to the Pacific Northwest. In Europe, an extraordinary heat wave swept across vast regions of Central and Southern Europe in what is pegged as the heat wave from hell. The so-called Lucifer heat wave saw temperatures surge to 44 degrees Celsius in the south of Spain, which in terms of Fahrenheit equates to nearly 112 degrees. Weather services across the continent have warned that this heat wave is so severe that damage is expected to occur to national crops and wildlife foliage, with a significant threat to life. The temperature in Campania, the region around Naples, Italy, was estimated to be a sweltering 55 degrees Celsius, which is 131 degrees Fahrenheit. With the soaring heat comes the threat of wildfires, and that is exactly what they have been experiencing in areas across Europe, as seen in this video clip from the Mediterranean shores of France. How serious are the heat waves in Europe? According to a study by the European Commission and published by the Lancet Planetary Health Journal, heat waves would become among the most lethal weather-related disasters responsible for nearly 99% of all future extreme climate-related deaths on the continent, estimated to be in the range of 150,000 deaths per year in the coming decades. So what we are seeing is a grim scenario unfolding, as was predicted by scientists, as climate change continues to escalate and affect future civilization. Climate change will then become one of the biggest global threats to human health and well-being, of this the 21st century, 
and its peril to civilization will be increasingly connected to weather-driven hazards, which is exactly what we see playing out today. Wildfires are now burning on the ice-covered island of Greenland. It is extremely unusual and likely unprecedented for multiple wildfires to be burning on the giant island, since Greenland consists of three-quarters ice sheet with permafrost covering most of the remainder of the island. The fires are in western Greenland, north of the Arctic Circle, and were first spotted on August 3rd in an area of degraded permafrost. According to a chart, the MODIS satellite imagery has detected far more fire activity in Greenland in 2017 than in any other year since it began collecting data back in 2002. There is a strong indication that geothermal activity is heating up well below the surface of Greenland. In late July, a pilot observed a mysterious stream coming out of the ice layer in Greenland, which suggests that something very strange is taking place from this region. As I conclude this presentation, I want to share with you some footage from the devastation in the wake of British Columbia's worst wildfire season in more than 60 years. As described in the words of a New Zealand firefighter who is battling the ongoing Canadian wildfires, it is like being in an apocalyptic twilight among the worst conditions that I have experienced in 25 years. So as you watch this video footage, I wish to thank each of you for being such loyal viewers and for your continued support. Here, then, is a glimpse into the aftermath of the British Columbia wildfires of 2017.